Well, we've gone through the worst characters, the most cryptic stuff, the best bosses, and the best tracks. What's left? Well, the best characters, of course. Now we're going to go through the best of the best with the top six FF6 characters. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. yeah. The reason Gogo is so high up on this list is mostly just because he's everyone. If you visit the status menu, you can give Gogo the move set of any character, except for Terra. This does make him slightly overpowered, but he's still cool. Also, there's a cool fan theory about him and Daryl. Check it out. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, number 5 is that ghost thing you meet on the Phantom Train. The Phantom Train is filled with mostly hostile ghosts. So seeing a ghost that wants to help you is just the kind of thing you can't say no to. The kind of thing that makes this guy so much more memorable is when I first played this part... Wow, I've said that a lot, haven't I? I eventually got to this one enemy in a chest who had a buttload of HP. So eventually I realized, hey wait, this ghost has possess. Let's see what that does. And he went up and took out that enemy. And it wasn't just dead, he was gone from my party. And then I realized, hey, at one point he was a living being. And not only is he dead now, but pretty much he's given up his soul so I could win that fight with I was losing. Wow, that's a lot for a guy who's only in your party for like five minutes and never says anything. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Now Mog is a weird one. See, when this game was first being advertised, they used Mog as Final Fantasy VI's mascot, so to speak. However, he's an optional character in the final game. That doesn't make him bad, though. What's cool is that when you're in the beginning of the game, and a team of Moogles help you protect to protect Terra, Mog stands out more because he's much more powerful. So when you find him later in the game, you want to play as him because you remember him being really powerful. And what's really cool is that you can teach Mog a dance this early in the game. Mog's dances make him choose a random move depending on what you choose. Kind of like Rage's. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned Shadow in my Lone Rangers video a while ago, shameful advertising, but I'll explain again. I don't necessarily like his moveset, because when you throw things then those weapons are gone forever and it just feels... it doesn't feel right. But his personality is great. He's incredibly independent, so you feel really good when he decides to join you. And what's amazing is that they give Shadow, the mercenary character might I add, an incredible backstory. Don't watch this and tell me this isn't scary. Zion is probably the most relatable character I've ever, ever seen in a video game, and that's really impressive for the time. His main time to shine is when his family is poisoned by Kefka. He freaks out in the same way anyone probably would. He jumps around, tries to kill everyone, and yells a bunch. His sword techniques are also really good and well balanced. Depending how long, on how long you wait, you get a better attack. He's just a really good, memorable character. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this choice is pretty uncommon, but my favorite character in Final Fantasy VI is Gao. While his moveset is only decent, it's his personality that I adore. He's always so happy and lovable, and even though he's an idiot at times, I can never really get angry at him. He also has a backstory, but it's pointless if you actually find it. His special ability is called Leap and Rage. He can leap on enemies in battle, and once you find him again, he can use the abilities of the enemy that he leaped onto. And that's really cool. And what's really cool is that he can use General Leo's ability, Shock. And that's just amazing. So there you go. It's my favorite character. Whoop-de-doo.